Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer this Thursday, the 27th of June. Today we will be looking at Psalm 105, Numbers chapter 17, and Matthew chapter 20. Let us pray. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now let us take a moment and confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Praying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. If you're able, please stand um, or remain where you are. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together we will read the Venite, which if you are using your Book of Common Prayer, is found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Now we will read Psalm 105, part one. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you will I give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them, and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land, and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If you would now please turn to Numbers, which is our Old Testament reading, and we will look at chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites, and get twelve staffs from them, one for each ancestral house, from all the leaders of their ancestral houses. Write each man's name on his staff, and write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi, 
for there shall be one staff for the head of each ancestral house. Place them in the tent of meeting before the covenant where I meet with you, and the staff of the man whom I choose shall sprout. Thus I will put a stop to the complaints of the Israelites that they continually make against you. Moses spoke to the Israelites, and all their leaders gave him staffs, one for each leader, according to their ancestral houses, twelve staffs, and the staff of Aaron was among theirs. So Moses placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the covenant. When Moses went into the tent of the covenant on the next day, the staff of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted. It put forth buds, produced blossoms, and bore ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the staffs from before the Lord to the Israelites, and they looked, and each man took his staff. And the Lord said to Moses, Put back the staff of Aaron before the covenant, to be kept as a warning to rebels, so that you may make an end of their complaints against me, or else they will die. Moses did so, just as the Lord commanded him. So he did. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me. We will now say together the song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established, the Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will look at Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 through 28. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. While Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves, and he said to them on the way, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and on the third day he will be raised. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him a favor. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? And they said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called to, to them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you, you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you, must be your slave, just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I will not do a full homily today, but I will say a few words about our gospel that we heard in Matthew chapter 20. We hear that Jesus has just revealed to his disciples, to his followers, that um, he is going to go up to Jerusalem, that he is going to be beaten and crucified. This was a big deal. It's still a big deal. And in the midst of this, the mother of two of his disciples come up and ask if her sons can be chosen as the favorites, if they could have a spot on either side of Jesus. She was seeking to guarantee their honor, their power, their position in the midst of this amazing thing that's happening. And what does Jesus say? Jesus asks if they are able to drink from his cup. And then he says, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. When he said this, when he asked them if they would drink from his cup, he was asking if they would be able to live the life of martyrdom that would be set in front of them. They're being called to be Christians in the early church. And we know that Christians in the early church were persecuted and harmed and hunted down and treated cruelly. This was not an easy, happy-go-lucky life. It was a very hard life. And they were indeed martyred. All but one of the disciples were. So this is a very true thing. He was asking them, are you able to experience what I'm about to experience? Because Jesus knew. Christianity does not guarantee us an easy road. It guarantees us that we're not alone and that there is heaven on the other side of it, but not that it will be painless. And then he goes on to ask them um, or to gather them and to tell them that the ways of the world are not going to be the ways of the disciples. He says, let's see here, where is it? You know the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them, but it will not be so among you. What he is saying here is that the power structure that existed in Rome, that existed in the world that they lived in, was of the world. The kingdom did not operate that way. In fact, he goes on to say that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That the first among you must be your servant. This is an example for us to always put the good of another in front of us, to always take the leftovers, to always take the last seat, to honor others in our place, instead of elbowing our way to the front and demanding a front row seat, which is hard because our humanity, our world tells us to be the loudest voice, to get the best spot, to raise or to rise in power. And Jesus is telling us the opposite here. He is telling us that whoever wishes to be first among us must first be the servant. And Jesus gave us a perfect example of what that is. He laid down his life as a ransom for many. And as Christians, we have the opportunity to do the same every day in small ways. What is one way that we can lower our desire, lower our self to honor another? I think that is where the uncomfortable part of being a Christian can be. Let's continue on. Let's say together, which can be found on page 69 of your Book of Common Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll pray together, suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the general thanksgiving together, found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Many blessings, and I hope you have a wonderful day.